Hello, welcome to this, the uh, 17th Sunday after Pentecost for this year. And I'm Pastor Sean Nider here at Zion Lutheran Church in Grand Coulee, Washington, and also Bethel Lutheran Church in Cooley City, Washington. Our readings this week from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 10, and then continuing our reading in James chapter 3, verses uh, uh, 1 through 12, 1 through 12, and in uh, the Gospel of Mark, we've skipped a few, a little bit, uh, picking up again at Mark 9, 14 through 29, when Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration, and that's where our, um, our bulletin cover comes from for today, uh, the words of a uh, Desperate Father, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Our uh, hymns today uh, at uh, Bethel will start with all praise to God who reigns above. And here at Zion, praise to God the highest good. And for the sermon hymn at Bethel, we'll have from God shall not divide me. Here at Zion, praise the one who breaks the darkness. And then at both churches, we'll finish with, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. And our children's hymn this week uh, is, uh, Thy loving kindness. Thy loving kindness is better than mine. So, um, thank you for, for joining me today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the Collect Prayer for this week. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her by your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, the Father, and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sticks and stones, right? You know the phrase, say it with me. How does it go? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words shall never harm me. Uh, maybe there's a few slightly different words maybe, uh, from different places in the country, but, uh, way to say it, but you all know the phrase, sticks and stones. With, uh, can you remember the first time you ever heard that phrase, someone spoke it to you. Uh, was it before you even started kindergarten? Because kids can be cruel, right? Um, and if you can't remember the first time you heard it, maybe what's the first memory uh, of it in your life? How was it used? How was it said to you? Were you being bullied, uh, called names? Did it help you to Control your temper and not retaliate, to, to not feel quite so bad. Do you have a memory of who it was that was saying that phrase to you? Or maybe the tone of voice, uh, because the tone of voice makes a big difference, doesn't it? Sometimes people can say that phrase, but with the tone of voice, the way they say it, you know they've really been hurt by the words that were spoken. Now the phrase, I did a little research, and uh, it seems to have become popular, published in a couple of uh, Christian magazines, publications, around the 1860s. And why did they publish this rhyme? <clears throat> well, to encourage children to resist bullying and, and uh, well, <laughs> to de-escalate disputes, so to speak, right? Uh, playground fights. Well, sounds familiar, huh? Do we still use this phrase, or is there a new proverb that the children learn today? I don't always keep up with the new things. Um, so you can choose, we can choose, not to let words and names other people call us hurt our feelings, or uh, to pretend that they weren't said or meant. And sometimes <clears throat> rash spoken or written words can drift off, forgotten, and forgiven. Sometimes they don't, uh, they don't, no matter how hard we try to ignore them 
and to move on. When I was a freshman in high school, we were new to town, and not, and not a uh, particularly easy time to start a new school. I wasn't the most outgoing, charismatic young man. Uh, I was smart and athletic and musically talented, so some people, some of the other students may have considered me a challenge to uh, their place in the local school and, and community, and um, so it wasn't an easy time for me. Now, it seems to me that high school is hardly an easy time for anyone, right? <laughs> Except for a, a few people who uh, then try to live the rest of their lives, you know, still stuck in, in that high school behavior. But uh, anyways, so in the, my first year, first few months in this new school, someone started a rumor about me and after that, no one wanted to be seen with me, let alone be friends. Uh, now the next morning, when I arrived at school, hoping that it was forgotten, and I went into the cafeteria as we normally did before school, sat down at the table with the rest of the freshman boys, and uh, they gave each other a look, and then got up and moved to another table. And I thought about it for a second, and then I got up and followed them, sat down, and then they got up again and moved again. Which, at which point I realized without a doubt that this was no accident and that uh, things weren't going to simply disappear overnight. So, well, I left the cafeteria and uh, I don't remember exactly what I did that morning, but I did spend a lot of time in the library. Some people might say I was hiding there. Uh, <laughs> uh, and hoping to meet some friends. Easy. Nobody wants to be alone, right? Not completely alone. And I did de uh, develop some friendships. Other people would, who we would hi hide out, we spend time in the library, reading and talking. And uh, we, uh, I was not treated so badly the rest of my school days, but I was never, never trusted that popular group again, or tried to be part of it. Um, and I was successful uh, in, for high school in sports and music, and, and I even had an important part in the school play. But uh, college and adult life have been much more blessed to me, and much more enjoyable, uh, joyful, uh, so thank the Lord for that. So yes, those words, I do remember them. Did they hurt me as much as sticks and stones could have? Well, hard to say exactly, isn't it? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily say I feel hurt or anger or anything about them. But uh, I did have loving, supportive parents who helped me through that time. And um, you know, we can all probably think of some other people who have been driven to complete despair by the words of, of others, right? Uh, people who have hurt themselves physically uh, more than what the people who spoke the words intended, hopefully. Uh, now James understands this. In our, in our lesson of James today, he compares the tongue to, well, first to the rudder of a ship. Such a small part of the ship, right? But it steers and directs the ship where to go, uh, wherever the rudder points it. Or, he also compares it to a fire that can quickly spread and consume thousands of acres. I don't know what fires wildfires were like in the ancient Middle East, but uh, I think we have a pretty good understanding of that image, you know, at least as good as James did, you know, in our own area where fires are prevalent. So, even for us, Christians and children of God, how easy is it for some words to get out of our mouth before we even realize what we're saying, words that hurt our closest loved ones, as James says, who can tame the tongue? Sticks and stones. 
But there are other parables that speak of the power of words, right? Can you think of any of them? Uh, a few? What, what might they be? How about, this one's a, a popular one, the pen is mightier than the sword, right? Or, as uh, I think Gutenberg said, give me 26 lead soldiers and I can conquer the world, referring to the letters of the printing press. Or uh, a, more, a more common modern image that I've seen, words are like toothpaste. Once they're out, you can't put them back, right? Do you know any others? Go ahead and add them to the comments. That'd be fun to, to share, interact a little bit. Thanks for watching. So, words are powerful, right? They can start insurrections or, or make insurrections seem bigger than they really were. Uh, they can start revolutions or stop revolutions. Words can build people up, bless them, and encourage them to be more than they are. God certainly understands the power of words. God created the entire universe, all that is visible and invisible, right? By speaking. God forgives our sins by words. God declares us holy and righteous by words. God makes us alive and adopts us as his children by words. He teaches us how to love by words. Isaiah spoke the words of God. Hopefully you read our Old Testament lesson. It starts out with the Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, uh, that I may sustain him with the word, he who is weary. All things, all these things that Isaiah spoke have happened or are continuing to happen, just as God said they will. Uh, Jesus spoke the words of God. Not just his own words, although he was divine himself, he himself said, only what the Father gave me to speak. Jesus used words to rebuke the evil spirit, to set a young boy free from bondage and from the dangers of being possessed by a demon. Jesus taught the disciples that they could do the same through the through prayer, that is, words spoken to God the Father. You can also cast out demons, not by your own power or authority or words, but by the power, authority, and words of your Heavenly Father, who has complete power over all things, even evil spirits. Prayer is not powerless, empty words. Prayer is the most powerful thing we can do to, to ask for the help of our Heavenly Father. Human words, even in human laws, do not stop evil people from committing atrocities. We are reminded of that day after day. Only the Word of God that brings the Holy Spirit into their hearts change them so they love their neighbors and do not want to hurt them anymore, physically or verbally, right? If we all lived God's love in our lives, or I could say when, when we live in love, we won't need any laws anymore because we will know how to love in words and deed. We won't hurt anyone ever again. God will cast out all evil spirits that will be surrounded and live in his pure love. So you can do that now. You can live in God's word and be surrounded by it and filled by it and speak it. And the more that God's word is in you, the less that sinful words will be in your mind or in your mouth, in your tongue. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will uh, confess our faith in the triune God and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who, who, who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me. And seriously, I, I love to see your comments. Uh, we don't get a lot, but uh, I do appreciate them. So uh, remind me of some of those other phrases that talk about the power of words, proverbs, and uh, sayings, quotations. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.